Hello everyone and welcome to a new session of Microtech Canada's online MTCNA course. If you recall, after setting up our MTCNA home lab, we set out to learn about some basic network troubleshooting tools in router OS. We started off by understanding ping and used this diagnostic tool to check our connectivity with different IP hosts via sending packets over the network. Then we used traceroute, which helped us identify the route taken by our ping packets en route to the destination IP address. And finally, together with traceroute, we employed the torch tool to receive more information about the behavior of these packets throughout the network and potentially pinpoint the place where our packets were being dropped. In this session, we want to talk about log. We will first briefly review the traceroute and torch dynamic of our last session and then discuss log and logging in router OS. Previously, if you remember, we employed traceroute on our class access point through its upstream network toward the global destination IP address of 8888. To do so, we'll input the address 8888 in the traceroute2 field and use the first IP address on our class access point that is 172.31.252.100. As you can see, the trace is successful. Now, if we run Torch on the interface titled Ether1 to Internet, which is our out interface for this trace, it is evident that the two addresses of 8888 and 172.31.252.100 have an ongoing interaction and we have both transmission and reception between them. Once we change our trace's source address to the second IP address of the class IP, which is 10.0.0.254, and restart both commands, we start receiving timeouts for the trace route. And as for the torch, you can see that we have transmission traffic, but there is no reception, which tells you that there is a disconnect between these two IP addresses. Now, by referring to our network map, you can see that the two addresses of 10.0.0.254 on the class IP and 10.0.0.1 on the trainee router are within the same network. So let's take a step back and run the traceroute command from the trainee router toward the destination address of 8888 while we monitor the class IP with Torch. To this end, we'll open our Winbox sessions for each device side by side. On the left, we have the trainee router and on the right, there is the class AP. Our source address of choice on the trainee router is 10.0.0.1, so we'll input 8.8.8.8 as the destination of our trace and add 10.0.0.1 as the source address. The trace returns timeouts as can be seen. Now let's first run Torch on the Ether1 interface of the class access point. So, we're sending trace packets from the source address of 10.0.0.1 from the trainee router and using Torch to monitor the interface Ether1 on the class AP. As you can see in the Torch results, between 8.8.8.8 and 10.0.0.1, we have transmission traffic for the Ether1 interface, but there is no reception. If we move Torch to the WLAN1 to class interface of the class AP, we receive the same results but vice versa, which means the WLAN1 interface is detecting reception traffic from the trainee router but does not show any transmission. At this stage, it would be quite useful if you could get some comprehensive information about the status of our network. This is where Log comes in. Log is a tool that records information on a great range of system events and configuration conditions. You can save and share router OS logs via different media such as the router's memory, external storages, emails, and remote servers. Each log entry contains three main parts, time and date, topics relevant to the log message, and the message itself. For instance, in these examples below, you first have the times and dates of an occurrence, then the relevant topics separated by commas, and finally, the entire log message. You can access the main log window in router OS via the system menu and the logging submenu. In this window, you have two tabs titled Rules and Actions. In the Rules tab, you can use the plus button to define a new log rule. Here, you can select one or more topics for your log, 
type in a prefix of your choice that will be used to identify this rule and also choose your intended action for this rule. The actions in this list can be defined in the Actions tab. Here, you can add a new action by typing in the name of that action, choosing the action type for which you have these five choices, and determining a limit for the number of log entries this action shows. Now, if we go back to the Rules tab and take a look at the topics available for defining a new log rule in this menu, you'll see that we don't have a topic related to the ICMP protocol that underlies our ping and trace packets. So, how can we receive the necessary logs for the packets that we're sending to the destination address of 8888? Join us in our next tutorial where we'll answer the question and teach you how to use logging as a firewall filter rule. Thank you for watching this video. Give us a thumbs up if you liked our tutorial and don't forget to jot down your questions in the comments section.